Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Stratford Reds Devils Talk. As you could probably tell from the tone of my voice, it's not a good time to be a United fan. But is there ever a good time to be a United fan during this modern era? Has there ever been a good time to rejoice and to jump up in the air and scream that you support United post-Fergie? Has that ever even happened anyway? Probably not. But regardless, today is not the best of days. As most of you are aware, Man United lost 6-1 at home to Tottenham. I repeat, Man United won, Tottenham 6 at Old Trafford. A completely and utterly shocking result from the start to the finish. No good parts in that performance whatsoever. The scoreline illustrates that. And if anything, a further indication of just how far we've fallen behind that we allow ourselves to get battered at home by Tottenham. A club that Sir Alex Ferguson, you know, so um, effortlessly coined. It's just Tottenham, right? They called it one of the easiest places to go get points if you're a top side, right? They were flattered to deceive when you got to Tottenham. They got to the Champions League final, but they couldn't deliver if you're a Tottenham, right? They haven't won a trophy in how long, Tottenham? And still, they managed to tear us apart, limb from limb, from the beginning to the end. It wasn't even a contest. To say it was man against boys is probably an insult. It was beyond that. It was beyond that. A completely, utterly shocking performance from everybody involved, from the coaching staff to the boardroom to the players <coughs> on that pitch. <coughs> so just a complete shocking, 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 shocking performance. And um, yeah, um, what can be said, really? Um, we went ahead in two minutes. I actually missed the first goal. I was getting myself a little beverage. And by the time I turned on my um, my computer to watch the, watch the match with one goal ahead, and I thought, wow, that's a pretty good start. But knowing United and knowing how we play, we usually respond better when we go a goal behind. So I thought, you know what? I'm not really feeling too comfortable, especially when we start to open up the pitch and Tottenham can hit us on the counter with their attacking fullbacks, even if there are Ben Davis and um, Aurier, which is a big surprise. I think, no, sorry, um, there was Reglion and Aurier. I think everyone assumed um, they were going to sign, they were going to play their new signing. I forgot his name, the number two they bought from Wolves. Uh, but instead they went for Aurier, who was probably... The inclusion of Aurier and then the, the surprise, quote-unquote, inclusion of Son was an indication of just how well-prepared Tottenham were in comparison to United. Aurier playing instead a physical presence who's probably not the best when it comes to defending, but he's got the physicality, he's got the pace, he's got the tenacity needed and the big game fight that he was probably the best um, addition that Tottenham could have done on that left-hand side especially with Rashford marauding down there. I think he picked the right person to go ahead for Rashford one-on-one. -on -one. And then, of course, Song Hyun Min on the counter-attack is just a different level of player. His um, finishing ability one-on-one -on -one is just on another level as well. And that was always going to cause us problems. And for some reason, Harry Kane decided to roll back the years. He decided to shed a couple of pounds. He decided to turn into a number 10, right? Um, he did, what, did he provide two assists, I think, and score one goal? A truly, truly, truly humbling experience to suffer. Um, oh, sorry, he scored two goals, actually. I'm looking at him on the screen. He's got two goals. <laughs> One from open play, uh, probably a delightful goal from just inside the box after by his mistake. And what can we say, man? Um, again, no point analysing the goals because there are calamity of errors. Go through the team and just say... Um, Eric Bailly, of course, was shocking. I think no one can deny that. We were all kind of ch chomping at a bit for Bailly to be introduced into a team. We are all hoping that he was going to be the solution that we needed in order to kind of stabilise our defence because so far Harry Maguire has flattered to deceive. And Bailly had one of his performances that makes you question, that makes you realise why a lot of managers haven't necessarily, or not a lot of managers, Mourinho and probably Solskjaer haven't seen it fit to rely on him going forward. He's too inconsistent in his performances and of course he's injury prone. He suffered, he's been on the sidelines too often and he's inconsistent. Um, even if he has the natural ability, even if he has probably more natural ability in his left toe than Lindelof and Maguire combined, you just can't rely on that. As a championship, or if you're trying to win the championship, if you're trying to win trophies in the Euro in Europe, if you're trying to win domestic cups, you just can't rely on Eric Bailly. So shocking. Then you scan across to Eric to sorry to um, Harry Maguire. And I don't know what to say about Harry Maguire. I think I've kind of been very clear in my opinion that I don't think he's any better than any of our defenders we have on our team. I was never impressed by him. I was never sold on the whole idea that he was somehow John Terry reincarnated. He doesn't hold a candle to John Terry. 
He's not vocal enough. He's not fast on the floor. He's not commanding in the air. He doesn't score enough headers on corners even. Um, he doesn't read the game that well. Did I mention he has no turn of pace? He can't pass the ball out from the back. Even though he tries to do these cross-field um, Gerard S passes to the flanks, they always go out of touch. They always put the uh, attacking player under pressure. They're not really done. They're sort of telegraphed. He takes an age to pass the ball. He'll look up, look up, look at the player and then release it. By the time he's released it, someone's already come to cover the, the player that's going to receive it. So he's not necessarily done with any sort of zip. He doesn't pass the ball through lines as much as you'd want him to. He flies to deceive in the nth degree. And the worst thing about um, Harry Maguire, again, it's not his fault, but he was bought. He was purchased for £80 million. Pounds. That's the issue we have here. £80 million. Once you cross over the fifty million threshold, usually they reserve that sort of figure for the special players. I think even you know, you look at someone like a Fred, you look at someone even like a Lindelof, even like an Eric Bailly, they were hovered around the twenty, thirty million pound mark, right? That is equivalent to like ten, fifteen million back in the day. That's with inflation, but usually, for the most part, the fifty million plus players are usually the ones you reserve for the top, 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 top quality. Or, of course, if you want to pay up the odds and just secure the person's um, signature. But more likely than not, if you're signing someone for eighty million, you are saying, "Hey, you're going to be a difference maker." In the same sense as Allison was for Liverpool, in the same sense that Lip Van Virgil Van Dijk was for Liverpool in that first season, they're difference makers. And at the moment, Harry Maguire isn't. He's not good enough, I think, personally for United. I think he's probably a Leicester level uh, defender in the first place. But then if you have to if you if you have to spend eighty million on Harry Maguire and then you have to spend another fifty plus to get a partner that's going to accommodate him or that's going to make him look good, that's fifty that in my opinion, that's eighty million wasted. You can't buy an eighty million defender and then need a partner to partner him in order to make him look good. So the for me the Harry Maguire conversation is finished. He's no he's not an he may not a captain. He's not even He's no better than a Lewis Dunk, in my opinion. He's no better than a Tchaikovsky. He's no better than a Ben White. And Ben White's much younger with far more potential with a higher ceiling than this than him. Then, of course, Luke Shaw, terrible performance. But the less said about him, the better. I think someone referred to him as James Corden. Shocking, shocking player. Um, I, um, Iwobi, sorry, not Iwobi. Um... AWB at right back again terrible performance but he's been terrible for a long time the midfield less said about that the better that combination doesn't work Matic, Bruno and Pogba doesn't work Bruno and Pogba probably doesn't work probably Matic and two others probably works but not Bruno and Pogba that doesn't work whatsoever Pogba's all over the shop Matic was nowhere to be found Bruno got hooked at half time the front line were basically missing, especially after Martial got sent off. Just shocking. And if anything, it further emphasizes the real problem that we have at United. In my opinion, again, we have big issues in terms of boardroom, in terms of ownership. We know that. The Glazers have taken money out of the club every year and not invested one penny of their own money. They've leveraged the club to, to get more loans, to get more money that they can go spend on whatever else that they're doing. But they're not investing anything into the club. They've made their position known. They want us to qualify for the Champions League in order to make sure we have money coming in. And that's it. They don't want to aim for anything more than that. Whenever the, whenever our managers ask for more money for us to push on after we've qualified for Champions League, they've always kind of, you know, held their purse strings tight. They've made their position clear. So we shouldn't even bother getting into that because nothing we can change about that as fans. We can't change the ownerships. We can't even change people like Ed Woodward, right? He's failed at his job for seven years, right? Manager after manager has been fired under his reign. Um, shit recruitment after shit recruitment. And his position is never in jeopardy. He's the one person in the world who somehow he performed badly and he never, ever gets pulled up on it. So we can't do nothing about that. Only thing we can affect are the managers and the players, for the most part. You boo the players, you give them enough stick online, and I guess sometimes they leave. I don't know. Sometimes, I don't know if that works. Managers, the same sort of thing. They perf they, they do they perform bad or they perform bad enough. They get enough bad um, results under their belt and they usually, most managers get sacked, right? They, they usually write their own ticket. So, if that's the only thing we can affect, we have to concentrate on the players and the manager. At the moment, I think the manager's not good enough because he's not picking up, he's not, in my opinion, picking the best combinations to make United fruitful. I don't necessarily think that that Tottenham side is better than what we have on paper. It's not. But I think the combinations, the lack of understanding which, comp which players complement which ones, what system complements the players that you have, what tactics are going to be best in order to beat the position that you're facing, they're not great. 
I really struggle to understand what we do in training during the week because I don't know what system that we set up to play. Of course, our way of playing was disturbed because Martial got sent off within 25 minutes. I get it. I understand. But overall, how do we play as a team? I couldn't tell you. We're supposed to be playing a counter, but I don't really see that. We supposedly try to play professional football, play from out of the back, but I don't really see the patterns that we're trying to establish. We just try and play out from the back. There's no patterns. There's no um, um, systems that we're trying to enact. There's no kind of flow that we're going for. There's no points that we're trying to hit. We're just trying to play out from the back generally and just hope it gets to a Pogba. It hopes to get to a Bruno so they can carry it further up the pitch and then give it to our front players to work their magic. It's all individual based. Without individual, without individual brilliance of Martial, Rashford, or Greenwood playing up front, or sometimes Bruno Fernandes from the penalty spot, we are finished. So for me, Solskjaer isn't the man. He has to go. He has to go, especially after that result. Any manager worth their salt, or any team, actually, any club that was actually aiming for trophies, will just fire him because there's no point even bothering. Because if, if the Glazers don't want to spend, and if Edward is incompetent and he's not going to hire a sporting director, the only thing that we can affect are the managers and the players. That's the only thing we can affect, only thing. And, and to some extent, the players we can't even affect anyway. If you sign a long contract, if you, you know, look at Phil Jones. We all think he's crap. We all think he's shit. We all think he probably shouldn't even be playing even in the Premier League for the most part. Yet he's still at the club collecting a wage. There's nothing we can do about that. The only thing we can affect is the manager. So for this current moment, in my opinion, especially when you look at the table, Solskjaer is definitely one of the worst, if not the worst manager in the league. No other team in the league will take Solskjaer as a manager or his coaching stuff. None. Zero. He'll struggle to get a job in the Premier League. Struggle. Struggle to get it. And looking on paper, thinking about he relegated Cardiff and now he's a United manager. On paper, it looks bad. Don't get me wrong. But it, I don't really see... I don't think someone's mistakes should be held up against them. I think managers, especially young managers, can have you know bad spells at a club. It doesn't necessarily write them off forever. But where is the evolution? Where is the manager that won the league with Mulder? I don't see none of that at United. I don't see any variation in our play. I don't see any kind of clever um, inclusions of players. For instance, like... Yes, we have Bruno, Pogba and Van der Beek. So it was probably ill-advised to buy Van der Beek if you're going to buy Bruno, right? It just doesn't make any sense because they're all much of a muchness. And they're all starters, right? They're not all... No one's going to... None of those players are going to be happy being on the bench. They're not They're not like second-string players, right? They're first-team players, all three of those guys. But I don't see any variation. I don't see any ingenuity about him figuring out what three, what combination of those three is going to work best to um, nullify Tottenham's midfield or to give them much more of a threat. Which three? Which combination works best? He doesn't necessarily do it. He just relies on this weird double pivot with Matic and somebody else or with McTominay and somebody else or Fred and somebody else and just hopes that whoever's playing in front of that double pivot is going to somehow deliver the ball to the strikers and they're going to score that way. That's all I see. I don't see any ingenuity in, the, in these combination of players. And then with this match against Tottenham, what did he change? He hooked off um, Matic and Bruno supposedly for having an argument at half time <clears throat> and then put on Fred and McTominay to solidify our to, to somehow stop us from scoring from leaking goals and we still conceded and not even conceded in like a way like you know usually if you if you get a man sent off early in the game you make a change at half time or sometime on the 30th minute just to just to kind of wake the team up and then if you can see the goal, it's usually a goal that you can see because you're being pulled from left to right. It's like, you know, Barcelona, they're pump. They're passing you, they're ticky-tacking you all over the pitch, right? They're stretching you from left to right. Your you're people are having to cover for two people and then suddenly and the gap opens up and they score. Cool. But they didn't even score like that. They scored with ease. They took us apart with ease. We didn't even put up much of a fight. And then you look at people like Paul Pogba and stuff, and you, you think to yourself, especially you look at someone like a Jack Grealish playing for Aston Villa, and you think to yourself, like, yeah, I understand we don't have the best players at the moment, because, I'm again, I like Paul. I think he's a great player. I think he's extremely talented. I think on paper, he's one of, if not our best players, right? He walks into any world team out there, right? But there's something, the, the, the thing we need to kind of realise as fans, Paul Pogba is never going to do it on his own. Paul Pogba is going to need the exact, perfect scenario, the best situation possible for him to flourish similar to what happened in France he has a great manager surrounded by great players um, with great tactics that bring out the best of the players that are available Paul Popper shines the moment you take one of those things away from him he he's absolutely nothing he might as well not be on the pitch truly shocking performance against Tottenham shocking shocking every time he got on the ball he looked laboured he was doing 
do, he was trying to do that weird step over thing that he does whenever he feels like the game is getting away from him to get his confidence back. He tries to do a skill that wasn't working out. He tried to pass the ball, wasn't working out. He tried to run forward and carry the ball, you know, a few uh, yards in order to kind of get us further up the pitch. That wasn't working. Nothing was working. Just a shocking performance, right? And I don't know again what it is with Paul. Is it is it better with somebody of that level of a player that you just get rid of him, get the money in so that you can reinvest it in other parts of the team? Because we ha- we are never going to get the best out of Paul Pogba unless we've got an actual competent manager who can pick the players around him that will bring the best out of him. But then on the other side, does Paul Pogba deserve that sort of treatment in terms of his application, in terms of his threat during the game, in terms of his general outlay in during the games in general? Does he deserve that sort of special treatment? I don't know. Does Bruno deserve it? Probably not. But that's the issue that we put ourselves in now. And then you look at someone like a Donny van der Beek on the bench. What do you think he thinks? Looking at these two guys plodding around the pitch. And then people make excuses about Paul because he hasn't got the right players around it. But look at Jack Grealish. He did it twice. He's done it twice so far. We're only three seasons in. He did it last season and kept Aston Villa up, playing in a poor team. And now, so now they've got good additions. Ollie Watkins, Ross Barkley playing for Aston Villa. And he's doing it again. He's still shining amongst those better players. So he's proven to you in two scenarios. When I'm playing with championship level players, I still perform. And then when I'm playing with Premier League potential players, players that probably, uh, you know, are future England um, cap winners, I can still perform. But can Paul say the same? Probably not. You pull Paul Pogba into a West Ham. Does he actually perform to a level that was required? I don't think so. Or not West Ham, sorry. You put him to a Paul, into a Fulham. Do you think Paul Pop is performing? No, not really. That's the issue that I hand at the moment. And it's not even to do with him again. It's just a catalogue of errors throughout the team. I don't really know what the solution is going forward. It was a really terrible game to watch. Excruciating right until the last minute. No fight. No change in tactics for the manager. No application for the players. And just a completely shocking performance all around. And again, this is further evidence to me that we're going to absolutely get battered in the Champions League. Absolutely battered. We're going to get raw dogs in the Champions League. Especially, have you seen recently? Our Red Bull Leipzig have signed, um, what's his name? Justin Clivert on loan. Do you know what they're going to do to us with a manager like Julian Nagelsmann, um, you know, shepherding that team forward? And PSG with Neymar and Mbappe firing. And Icardi is on, is on form now. They're going to tear us apart, man. We're going to get torn apart in the Champions League because we don't have a competent manager. Our recruitment policy is crap. And we have a mismatch of a squad and a team. It doesn't make any sense, our team. And I'm again, like I'm saying, I just think, if we had a manager in place, because again, I need to question the manager because the, the board thing is no even point in even getting involved in it. If we had a manager that was competent tactically, that could actually have some sort of ingenuity in terms of the plays he select, I wouldn't mind if he's decided, hey, my best combination is Fred, Van Der Beek and Bruno. I don't care who plays in that midfield. I really don't. Just get that combination right because at the moment, matches Bruno and Pobo doesn't work. Yes, they might be your best players in that position, but they don't work together. He's doing exactly the same thing that Gareth Southgate does with England. He just picks the best players in their position or his favourites. That's it. And then hopes it works. It's, it's, it's a Sven Goran Eriksson technique when he was managing England. You pick the best players and just, you just shove them in there and hope it works out. That's not how it works. You pick the best players. Like West Ham's midfield isn't much better than ours in terms of individual players, but they perform better as a unit. Liverpool's midfield, the same as a unit. Arsenal to some extent, the same as a unit. Look how much joy and song and dance they're getting out of Zaka. Pretty basic midfielder. Caballos isn't any better than the players that we have at the moment. Is Caballos any better than Lingard? Really? Shocking again. So yeah, main had six. Um, <laughs> main had one actually. Tottenham six. Shocking performance. Um, let me know what you think of the performance yourself. Do you think we were unjustly treated with the sending off? Do you think um, Lamella should have gone off too, or do you think? Solskjaer is, um, you know, aware of his depth and shouldn't be anywhere near the club. Let me know in the comments down below. This has been Shafford Red Devils Talk. Hopefully next time when I come on here, I'll be in far better spirits. Easy.